in building relationships that last. It begins with improving one's self-esteem, looking beyond face value, and choosing the right partner. You too can have the marriage of your dreams. Um, before I start, I would like to give credit to um, one of my sons in the ministry, um, son of the Lord. His name is Pastor Kingsley Aji. I hope I'm pronouncing his son name well. But his name is Pastor Kingsley, so he's my namesake, and he's also my son in the Lord. Um, this message, I, I saw the title. I saw, I saw the title on one of his programs, and I told him that I like that title. I want to preach that message, so I told him I'm going to preach the message. I told him to give me his notes. And I added my own pepper and salt. And I told him that whenever I'm preaching the message, I will give credit to him. So um, I'm giving credit to him. Pastor, you can clap for him. Great son of mine. Yeah. Um, he also runs a relationship meeting like this. Um, and um, I think he's the pastor of it, his church. It's called Leadway Church. Somewhere around Aurelia, I think. All right. Praise the Lord. Um. Why do good girls marry wrong? Before I enter the message proper, I need to let you know, as, as a woman, um, a lot of your happiness is going to be tied to, to your emotional uh, well-being. A lot of your happiness is going to be tied to your emotional well-being. I don't know why it is so. I believe that's how women were created. Um, you are emotional by nature as a woman, and that means that a lot of your satisfaction and fulfillment will come from an emotional point of view, meaning that when things are going well for you relationally or maritally, it adds a lot to your happiness. Um, most times, some men can actually live very well and very long without a relationship. Men can, men can successfully do that because uh, men are not as emotional as women. So we have we have we have forty year old uh, singles single men. We have forty five year old single men, and they are not in a relationship. Do you understand? They are very fulfilled as long as they are working. They are earning money. They are now they are chairman of uh, single men association nationwide. <laughs> Ambassador of. Uh, Single nation. So, because um, it, it's not the same for men. Men, a lot of men's happiness will come more from their work. That's how we're created. In fact, um, scripture shows us that the first thing God gave Adam when he created him was work. That's the first thing God gave Adam when he created Adam. He said, take care of the garden, keep it, nurture it, clear it, take care of it. So, since that time, a man's happiness and self-esteem is always attached to work. The first thing God gave woman is a husband. The moment she landed, the first thing she saw was a man that said, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. Since that time, women like relationship and they like to hear how beautiful or how important they are. They like compliments because the first thing a woman heard were sweet words about her. The first thing she ever heard. So, since that time, She's looking for those words. Even when she's married, she say, how am I looking? This plot is it nice. Is this one okay? And men being naive and ignorant as we are, say, no, it's fat. You are fat. If a woman asks you, am I fat? The answer is, God forbid. <laughs> you, fat. Who says so? <laughs> All these are ways not to lie. <laughs> Praise God. And, uh, and the sad thing is, like, women are usually far more emotionally developed than men. So women, you need to be patient with us. You guys are far more emotionally mature than men. Men are very slow 
in emotional development. Forget all the macho, forget all the activity. Most men are not emotionally mature. So em emotional arena is a very unfamiliar ground for them. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to put their leg. They don't know what is right and what is wrong. So it's a very panicky environment. But women, from the day women are, from when women are young, they are playing with dolls, they are, play, they are doing husband and wife, they are cooking, in the, all their toys are homely in nature. So they are used to that. The, on the other hand, the boys, as they are growing, they are playing with gun, <laughs> playing ball. All of them don't involve any kind of emotion. Praise God. So, women are far more advanced emotionally. Women, women, women are okay with using the words, I love you. Before a man will use the word, I love you. That's why if you're dating a guy or you're married to a guy, or you're on the phone, and you say, I love you. And it's where the people are. We say, same to you. <laughs> I wish you the same. Or back to sender. <laughs> God, those are unfamiliar territory for him. Praise God. So, you need to be patient with those guys. A lot of them are very, very untrained, underdeveloped emotionally. And they are naive. Most men don't understand that sometimes when a woman is quarreling with you, she's quarreling with you because since you are not talking normally, at least let's be quarreling and be talking. As long as we are talking. The man is naive. He doesn't understand that. Sometimes a man doesn't even know that when a woman is giving you trouble, it's not, what, it's not the topic that is the issue. She's just not happy with you. So anything can be a topic of fight. If, you say, if, you, if she's angry with you, and you call, say, honey, should I buy you food? You say, food, food. Am I just I'm hungry? Are you insulting me? It's only that same question can be a good question if everything is going fine. Women are usually very adaptable. And they always give conflicting messages to men. So, the man doesn't know which one is right, which one is wrong. A man and a woman can be arguing. And the man will say, get out. The woman will say, get out of here. The man will take it literally. And say, okay. And he's going. Then the same woman will go and block the door. And hold the shirt. You are not going anywhere. You are, like, you are confusing me, madam. Should I go or I should not? I'm confused. <laughs> because when she's saying get out of here, she doesn't really mean that. She doesn't mean that. She's just saying I'm upset with you. All right? But men don't understand that. So when a woman tells a man things like, you don't love me anymore, what she means is that right now, I don't feel loved. But you see, a man will take it literally. Say, me! Me! A man takes those instructions literally. A simple one that some men take literally. When a, woman, when a woman says, you will kill me today, she doesn't mean it. But you know, some men don't understand that. So you kill me say, yes, I'm planning to kill you. <laughs> no. Praise God. So women, be patient with those guys. That's why you see them at 40, still single. It's most times emotional immaturity. Most men don't even know what to look out for in a relationship. They don't know. Most women... Most women can actually, they have a wider variety of who they can marry. If a woman is treated right by, by a guy, she can actually marry that guy. Meaning that even though women have a speck in their mind, but usually their speck is more adjustable than that of men. Men, because they are not emotionally developed, they have a picture in their mind of who they are looking for. And that person doesn't exist. I was there, so I know what I'm talking about. Because most men need to know this. When you see a man single for a long time, in fact, any man single above 30, most times is looking for that dream girl that doesn't exist. Most times. Most times. He's looking for a slim, fine, tall girl, maybe that is half cast, <laughs> or that speaks for her, that has long hair, natural one. They have some false image in their mind of who they are looking for. Perfect girl that does not go to the toilet. 
See, that's what they're thinking. They're thinking they're going to meet one perfect girl that would excite them. And people like that, let me tell you this, guys. Usually, the longer you take to choose a spouse, the greater the chance that you will miss it. The greater the chance. Because you are looking for something that doesn't exist. You're looking for something that doesn't exist. God told me many years ago that I would do ministry. Along the lines I was doing ministry, I discovered I had a passion for relationships. I'm just interested in how a guy and a girl are running their relationship. I just discovered I had a passion for it. When you find your purpose, your life's job, your life stacks, you will discover that a lot of other things that you want are tied to it. Pursue your life's dreams. You either have a calling or you have a gift. These two things can point you in the direction of your purpose in life. Sometimes you can, you can know your life's assignment, you can know your calling by a passion that you have. So what makes a great country is a great people. What makes a great country is a great people. Personally, I don't think any guy should cross 30, 32. By 32, it's already late. You shouldn't. There are, there are abundant of good women everywhere. Abundant of good Christian women everywhere. But most times, they are looking for the two things the Bible itself warned us against. Because psychologically, and physiologically, that's how men are physically. Let me explain. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it says, beauty is vain. And it said, charm is what? Deceitful. These are the exact two things that most of these old single men are looking for. They are looking for a girl that will knock them out beauty-wise. And that we have such charisma, such charm, that's what charm there means, such charm that we knock them out. See it here, Proverbs 31. Give me, give me the version that you gave me before. I don't want favor. Favor, Nigerians you understand favor as a, I want something. <laughs> he said, charm is what? This is what single men, any man you see that is above 35, this, this is his problem right here. Charm is deceptive and beauty is what? Fleeting. Give me another version. Charm can what? Mislead and beauty soon what? Fades. Give me another version. Okay, they are all saying the same thing. I wanted something that would, that would give us a... It says, charm is deceptive and beauty does not what? Last. It's a charm and grace. You see, are, I don't know if you have met these ladies. There are some ladies that, even if they are not physic, physically so beautiful, but they carry, there's, a, there's an aura around them. Once they enter a place, they get all the men's attention. Have you seen those kind of girls before? You see, this is, this is, this is, this is the picture that these old single men are waiting for. They want a Miss World. They want a woman that wants to enter a place where we scatter. Charm and grace are deceptive and beauty is what? Vain. Because it is what? Not lasting. He said, but a woman who reverently and worshipfully what? Do, do, do you see this? God is trying to point them to, look. God is saying, look for a woman that fears God and knows God. Marry her. You'll be happier. But most of these guys, this is what they want, this first two. They are looking for something that will be emotionally exciting. Listen very carefully now. Listen very carefully. Let me quickly help your destiny now. <laughs> Sounds like a joke, but it's, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. Beauty will not last. The real beauty is internal beauty. If that woman 
has that internal beauty. As long as she's basically presentable, she's fine. If you are waiting for that, Miss World, they say charm is deceptive because it will deceive you to fall in love with this person. Meanwhile, he doesn't have character to go with it. So I've seen many of these guys marry these women that look beautiful, but they are difficult to maintain. They don't have character. Meanwhile, there are many good women, hardworking, love the Lord, but these oldies don't want. They want something that will excite them emotionally. Let me give you a quick exam. And this is exactly what happens in marriages. Quick exam. How many of you here, you have bought something that when you bought it, you were really emotionally excited? Can I see your hand? When you bought the thing. It can be a shirt, a shoe, a watch, a car. Two months after, were you as excited as when you bought it? Guys, please, listen carefully. That charm and excitement and spark and um, infatuation and all these things, that butterfly in your stomach, months into the marriage, just like every other thing, it will go. What you will be left with is character, value, love for God. That's what will be there. Now that you're single, I know you don't know. You, do you know? Be honest with yourself. You have gone through, some of you have gone through this cycle of buying something when you were excited and not being excited after you have it over and over again. Abi? So many of you guys that are single now, you think I'm talking rubbish now. Better listen because... If you, if you marry because of emotional excitement, those butterflies in your stomach, they eventually fly away. They don't live there. When they go, you'll be left with the reality of your decision. When I met my wife, there was no emotional spark. It was not, I was not excited. I liked her as a person. Watch out for people that say, I love you, I don't know why. I knew why I liked my wife and those reasons are still here today and I still like her today. That is important because the guy that tells you I love you, I don't know why, the day he's going to change his mind and say I hate you, he will say it for the same reason. I don't know why. I just don't know why. I'm just tired. That is the sick. Now listen, have you noticed, have you noticed that in the days of our fathers, they didn't marry based on emotion. Hope you know that. Oh, they didn't. Those days they married for basic things. For instance, they checked character. In fact, they didn't only check character, they would go and investigate your family. Am I correct? It was purely on tangible things. You will not hear somebody in those days saying, I saw the gay, I began to shake, I began to... So you will never hear that nonsense that young, that old men, I want to say young men, that old men are telling me today. You will never hear such. They married on clear value. Then they born for their house. Uh, are they, anybody mad there? Um, they get sense. They, they, once they check basic, real qualities. Some of those girls, you don't even have to meet them before time. They arrange the marriage. They just tell you, marry her, you'll be fine. They make sure, can she cook? Is her mother well behaved? Is her mother in her father's house? Can she cook? Once they get values sorted, forget a butterfly. And funny enough, those marriages are doing far better than all this butterfly marriage of our generation. Because we are making common mistakes that scripture says not to do. Charm. When I saw the girl, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I just confused. I'm excited. Excitement does not last. Look for a hardworking girl. Her head is on the ground. She's doing something with her life. She loves the Lord. She serves the Lord. She's hardworking. She's homely. She's doing what she can do. Marry this girl. There are many of them, good girls everywhere. And I'll see old men roaming around. It's tiring. And listen, guys, if you're a guy here 35 and above, if you're a guy here 35 and above, the challenge is this, and you have not met a lady yet. Challenge is that meeting the girl and marrying the girl will still take approximately one year. As you may meet the girl today. To still take one year. Because you will still be friends, you will still date, you will still meet father, meet mother, meet pastor, do church counseling. Rough, roughly, one year. By the time you do that, then um, if she gets pregnant on wedding day, it will take at least nine months before your first child comes. If she doesn't get pregnant on wedding day, 
you go, you go begin work. This means, for instance, if a guy here, 38, 39, and in two years, your firstborn will come. This means, sir. This means, sir. That when your first child is one year old, you'll be about 42 or 43. Who will go for his entire spouse? I know you're not thinking far now, but I'm here. I'm your pastor. I will help you think far. You know you, 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 know you won't go for the entire spouse. Okay, but you can go with wheelchair or walking stick. Because you're not thinking far now. You're, you're walking about, posing, looking for, for butterfly. Looking for charm. Meanwhile, there are good girls everywhere around you. But you cannot see. You're waiting for this dream girl that you watch in movie. That doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. Many of these guys have not faced the reality. I have, I have them in this church. I have 40 year olds, single men, roaming around in this church. Some of them have become serial daters. <laughs> Champion daters. They date all the new guests in church. They are daters. They never marry, just date. If you are in approaching 40, not married, not in relationship, your first child, they're going to be older than him with about 40-something years. That's your first child. We never talk about your last born. We never talk about your last born. The implication is this also. You will be paying school fees when you, ha you might have stopped working. The worst thing you can do to yourself as a man is to be paying heavy bills when you are not earning heavy money. Some of you here, you have parents that are retired now. You know what's up. The money you make at that age or at that level is just for you to barely survive. You can't be bearing bills like rent or school fees. And who knows how much school fees will be by that time. Because when we were young, primary school was free. Today, 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 there are some schools that are 500k primary school per term, not per, not per lifetime. So, their old brother, their old brother, you might be looking for butterfly and be roaming around because you, you and your friends, nobody's telling you the truth. I'm your pastor, I'll tell you the truth, man. You are running out of time. You can't afford the messing up the time you are doing. You can't afford it. Chairman Beard Gang. <laughs> Chairman Syria Data's Association. Chairman Single Fellowship Nationwide. For something. It's time to marry. I believe your relationships have been strengthened by the message you just watched. I want to give you a chance to enter the most important relationship of your life, and that is the relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are watching me right now and you are not born again, I want to pray with you. Just close your eyes and say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I receive the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for I am born again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you prayed that prayer with me, you are now born again. There are numbers on the screen. Please call the numbers. Someone will be willing to speak with you. God bless you.